So let's move on to the next section. Taylor and McLaurin series. So I said earlier that our goal is that we want to take any function and we want to write its power series. But for now, we've been, we were restrained. Yesterday it had to look like one over one minus. And even those derivatives and integrals that we had at the beginning, they only give us certain types of functions. I want to take any function I, can, I could have and write it as a power series. So again, we're looking at this question that says, how can we find a power series representation for a function f of x, any old function? So to do this, I need to learn something about the power series. So I'm going to go ahead and say, let's, let's say my function f of x already has a power series. And I don't know what it is. Let's just say it's c0, c1, x minus a plus c2, x minus a squared. Uh, I think I want to have three terms here, so c3 x minus a cubed and so forth it has some kind of power series and i'm listing out the terms and it has some radius of convergence i'm going to call it r and what we want to do if we want to write it as a power series a is some fixed value i need to find these coefficients c0 c1 c2 and c so we need to find these coefficients. We need to find the coefficients C0, C1, C2, and so forth. In order to write this function as a power series. So let's start with our power series representation here. Right here that we have. And I want you to plug in A for me into this equation here. And tell me what you get. So on the, on the left-hand side, you're going to get F of A. What are you going to get on the right-hand side? C0. C0, and that's it. So we already found the first constant. We found out that C0 has to be f of a. So I plug in a into my function, and that's C0. So we found C0. Let's say we want to find C1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this equation that I put the red arrows around, and I'm going to take the derivative of that equation. Okay. So uh, take a derivative to get. So on the left, it was f of x, so it'll be f prime of x now. And then on the right, the derivative of c0 is 0. It's just a constant. And then it'll be c1 plus 2c2 plus 3cx, 3c3, x minus a squared, and so forth. So c0 is gone from our equation. And let's do what we did on the last part. Let's plug in x equals a again. On the left, you're going to get f prime of a. What do I get on the right-hand side? c1. c1. 
So now we know how to find the coefficient C1. C1, I take the derivative of f and I plug in a. That's how I find the second coefficient. So we're kind of getting a picture going on. Let's, I'm going to underline C0 and C1. Let's go ahead and find C2 now. And we're going to just repeat this process. So you're going to take another derivative, but now it's going to be to this equation right here. You're going to take a derivative. So now I'm going to get f double prime, or the second derivative. Uh, derivative of c1 is 0. Looks like I get 2c2. Oh no, 2c2, that's not there. Plus 3 times 2c3x minus a. and plug in x equals a again. So I'm going to get f double prime of a is equal to what? 2c2. So if we solve for c2, it's the second derivative of a, plug in a divided by 2. And let's just do one more. Let's take one more derivative. So it'll be f triple prime, or the third derivative. It looks like I'm going to get 3 times 2c3, plus a bunch of other stuff, which we're not going to worry about for now. And when I plug in a, you're going to get 3 times 2 times C3. And if you solve for C3, it'll be the third derivative, plug in A, over 3 times 2. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get us to find a formula for Cn in general. But to find a formula, you can't pull it out of thin air. You've got to have enough terms written out that you can see the pattern. So let's write down what we just learned from our, our process here, what we were doing. We said C0 was f of a. C1 is f prime of a. We said C2 is f double prime of a over 2, and then c3 is f triple prime of a over 3 times 2. Is there a reason you did 3 times 2 instead of writing 6? Yes, you're going to see in just a second. When you write formulas, sometimes it's best to not simplify, and that's exactly what we're going to do here. So. I want to write a formula for Cn in general. I got to take what's here in these four and figure out what the pattern is. So let's look what's happening. Start with my function, derivative, second derivative, third derivative. So it looks like each time I go down, I'm just going to take another derivative. Right? And the number of derivatives is the same as the index here. When it was C3, you had a third derivative. When it was C2, the second derivative. So it looks like in the numerator, I'm going to have the nth derivative, and I plug in A into that. Okay? Now we've got to deal with the fact that these, we have these constants here. Where did this 3 times 2 come from? It came from doing the power rule twice on a cube. It was 3, and then I brought down the power 2. The same thing here. This is a square, and I brought down the power, and I brought down the power again. 3 times 2, isn't that the same thing as 3 factorial?
And two, isn't that the same thing as two factorial? And there's not anything up here, but you could imagine that this is divided by one. So it looks like one factorial. This is also divided by one, which is zero factorial. So the denominators, again, they match the index here. C3, three factorial. C2, two factorial. C1, one factorial. So it looks like my denominator is going to be n factorial. And it's n factorial because you're doing the power rule over and over n times. So every time you take the power down, you reduce it by 1, you bring that power down again over and over. So now we know all of our coefficients, which is what I needed to know. This tells me exactly what I needed to know, what my coefficients are. So now I can write down my power series for my function. My power series is going to be the sum. These were, it was, I'll write down Cn first. It was Cn, x minus a to the n, but we just found out what these coefficients actually are. They are going to be the nth derivative, plug in a, over n factorial. So this is your power series representation for your function at your value a, power series at a, okay? Seems kind of crazy. Now we can do any function we want we just have to take a whole bunch of derivatives and find a formula for these 